RB Leipzig, the Bundesliga's youngest club, founded in 2009, had quite a controversial rise to the top. They are arguably the most hated team in Germany. I personally quite like them. They're sort of like... They are the Bayern, you know, like Bayern Munich treat them as a Bayern club. They pip, they poach all their talent. Liverpool are also quite keen on their players. But today we're going to be rebuilding them over five years and hopefully taking over Bayern's spot in first place. Before we get into the video, smash the video a like, drop a comment who next and be sure to subscribe. So this is how I'm going to line up. This is the squad that we have at the moment. I am going to be using the Diamond Destroyer Zaz Blue DM. Martin Snoop 4-3-3 hybrid in this one. I'm a big fan of the formation. But the team that we've got is actually really good. We've got obviously Galashi, Klosterman, Orban, Mukulele, Angelino, Haidara, Lima, um, Campbell. Obviously, I would play Sabosloy in there probably, or Olmo. Um, and Kunku, Silva, Paulson. And then obviously on the bench, we've got like Mavogo, Halastenberg, Olmo, Sorloff, Simikon, Sabosloy, um, Hemrick's, Tyler Adams, Forsberg, Guavardio, Mariba. Uh, Martinez and Blaswich and we do have as well 20 million pounds to spend so I am going to look to bring in possibly or definitely um, a more well balanced more prolific goal scorer in terms of striker to pro probably partner Silver. we've got a lot of players in midfield that are great and we've also got a very strong back line and goalkeeper so definitely going to be looking for that striker so i'm going to do some business in the transfer window and i'll come back to you once we've organized and hopefully brought in a good striker So then guys, season one of transfers has been completed and we've done some great business. One of these players aren't showing up here because he doesn't join until I believe it's the first month of 2022. But I'm going to show you him as well afterwards. But the first player we bring in ourselves is Vitinha from FC Porto for 30 million. Obviously, some installments in there to be able to afford him. A fantastic player. He's going to be playing that Metzala role in this tactic. Very well balanced. Only 21 years of age as well. So you really are getting a fantastic player here. And I just feel like he's also got room to grow in this team. And he's going to be with us the entire save because obviously he is 21 so although he costs a fair bit of money he just bolsters that midfield because we did offload a player who i will show you in a second but what a replacement this guy is moving on the next player we brought in is from obviously a club which we do do business with quite a bit in um salzburg for 17.5 million i'm um, hopefully it'll say that no the thought was going to say what it was a little bit up front rest installments as well and again just because he's got decent potential and obviously we lost to Picano, we lost Canate. We do have good options at the back, but this guy's sort of a backup to break into the first team going forward. And again, he's 21 years of age, very decent height for a centre half, good jump and reach, very well balanced. And as you can see here, we really, we really are building a list up of players that can play across the back line. Moving on then, so the one player we personally sold before I got to the club was Kevin Campbell because a reasonable offer come in for him. He is 30, Shakhtar come in for 13 and a half million. So I decided to sell him and bring in someone younger who already is better. So that's why we got rid of him. And the last player that we brought in who isn't joining until, oh, we can see there actually, he doesn't join for quite some time, but it's actually Martin Citrano from Inter Milan. We can't see his entire stats until he's here, but he is a very good player. I've used him a lot on Football Manager. He, again, is 20 years old, and he's just going to be our main striker. I tried signing a lot of strikers, but on this new database, which I'm sort of outside, that I downloaded it from, sorry, basically a lot of players obviously have just joined clubs, so like people like a Demi and things you can't sign because they're not interested. So this is who we went with, and also um, this guy was already pre-agreed in Martin van der, Vo van der Voort from Genk. So that is going to be the transfers done. This is the way we're going to line up, as I did show. Um, obviously, Vitinha there in that Medzala role. We've also got a very, very strong bench now. We've got um, Sole, Sole there on the bench. We're also going to have another striker come in. We've got Simakan, obviously, who's a very good defender as well. Very good depth in the midfield. I mean, we've got Sabosloy and Nkunku, who obviously are going to be playing and fighting for that shadow striker role and also obviously i think sabosloy can play yeah he can play metzala he can play in box to box as well and i'm pretty sure danny olmo can do the same so there's very very good depth in that midfield but let's get into the first season and see how we do so guys that is the first season 
simulators. We've been given 45.6 million. That is a big chunk of money to be playing of. We've got 50% of the transfer revenue as well, which is good if we do decide to sell anyone. Now, no more players have been sold, so this is purely what the, what the board have given us to play with, which is which is good to be fair. Let's see where we finished. I want to check. I want to check one thing. So we've got we've got to realise this is a new database. So Dortmund have no Haaland. They do have a Demi, and potentially Bayern might not have might not have sorry Lewandowski. Because obviously in real life his contract's coming up. He wants he he wants a move. So we'll have a look and see where we finished. Let's go. Wow. Dortmund's still finishing third, but me and Bayern in the title race, we win it quite convincingly, scoring the best 98 goals, 21 goals conceded. We also win the Champions League versus Man City, which is absolutely outrageous in the first season. I don't know how we've managed that. Typical teams going down. Let's have a quick look at Dortmund. It should be they shouldn't they should have a demi. And though yeah, they've got a demi there scoring 22 goals. Not bad there um by any means and no Haaland and Bayern also did they lose Lewandowski or did he stay he stayed scoring 51 goals wow okay he is a goal machine but um no we absolutely battered the first season then I did not expect that Paulson top goal scorer with 26 um, our player should have come in no he actually is still waiting to come in I must have got that wrong of course, that's their seventh. Yeah, that, that's my fault. So we didn't even get Sotrano in. So we've we done that without actually signing the striker, which is scary for the rest of the teams in the division. Now, if we have a quick look at the schedule, this is going to be a lot of green. Yep. A wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. That is outrageous. Obviously, I've shown you the tactic I'm using. If you guys want me to like show you where I got that from, I can leave a link. Um, if you if you comment you want it, I'll reply with the link. It's not my tactic. I want to clarify. Um, I never steal tactics. At the end of the day, I use tactics from around the scene. The tactic that I'm using for this save, I thought worked really, really well. And that's why I want it, because Leipzig don't have the best wingers. So I thought I'd use this tactic. We actually do get beat there 5-1 by Dortmund. And we do leave in the fight, or we do lose sorry in the final of the pockle to buy munich there we do beat man city with oh, to be for all the goals wow look at that all the goals scored pretty similar times but we seal out the champions league final villarreal in the semi-final we'd be playing the quarters liverpool who we beat and severe in the first knockout now we look at the squad we're going to go over some match ratings so We'll go over the goals first. So we've got 26 from Paulson, 25 from Nkunku, 22 from Silva, 20 from Olmo, 12 from Sabosloy. Assists, we've got 14 from Olmo, 14 from Sabosloy, 13 from Silva, 12 from Mareba, 12 from Mukulele, which is very impressive. 11 from Vitinha, our star man, our new man. And if we go by match ratings, Danny Olmo picking up the highest match rating on average and the lowest coming from... Comrade Lima, very surprising because usually he is one of my go-to players who I like to play with on Football Manager, but not too serious because at the end of the day, we have had an absolutely outrageous season. Now, this is the team that we did obviously do it with. There are some injuries here, but this is the team that we have been playing. Obviously, I'll let you have a quick look at it. I won't read out the names again because we did that already. But and in terms of first seasons and how they go, I think that is a huge improvement. I'm not actually sure where I'm going to strengthen now because we've had such a good season. I don't want to bring in six or seven new players or three or four new players, be a bit more realistic and completely turn heads and, you know, all of this and all of that. I might be tempted to sort... I mean, Paulson, how old is he? He's 27. So he's still... He's not even got the best sort of attributes, but he's scoring goals, so I'm going to keep him. I might move look to move on Sorloff and, you know, possibly Forsberg and maybe bring in um, Treat... Um, Sotrano was a backup striker and bringing a completely world-class striker to partner alongside of Andre Silva, who does look like he's got quite good attributes. I'm a big fan of him, personally. How old is Galashi? He's 32, so possibly... But, I mean, we've got good goalkeepers anyway in terms of backup. We've got, like, Martinez, who probably isn't the best. This guy's good, though. Mavogo, I've heard of him. Yeah, he looks reasonably really good. So, we've got good options there. So, I'm going to have a little look and see where we can get more depth, and I'll come back to you with the second window of the signings. So then, guys, Season 2 of the transfers has been done, and we have spent big 
on a centre forward. I rarely get a chance to bring in a proper world-class young centre forward in my saves. And I finally had the opportunity to do it. And that is none other than Victor Asimhen from Napoli. 95 million with 150 million, as you can see there. I mean, it's a, it's a big figure, but he looks honestly incredible. He is rapid, already got great finishing. Obviously valued a lot more than what we paid for him as well. One of the best strikers in the game, in my personal opinion. And he will easily get one of the starting slots up top. And for me, this guy, obviously, he'll be with us for the duration of the save. I'm literally getting a striker that has got 10 years in him, to be honest. So, I mean, overall, it's not too bad. We are going to be paying him off for, like, the next year. But to be honest, he was still at Napoli and they accepted my offer. So, I was like, do you know what? Let's get him. Why not? Now... Few few other things. So the second thing, Martin Citrano um, has actually joined. So now he's going to be our backup because we did manage to move on. Hopefully it will say it. We did manage to move on Soloff to Dortmund. The reason I sold him to a rival is because I don't really fear him too much. I don't think he's going to do too much at Dortmund, being honest. So that's why I was happy to see him, you know, go to Dortmund. And that is why um, Citrano is now going to be well, he can be fighting for on against Andre Silva, obviously, for that spot and Paulson. Um, I'm pretty sure Asim Hen will be definitely the top goal scorer because he is honestly incredible. A few other things which I want to go over just so you guys are aware what's going on. I still have 17 million to spend, but I'm not going to spend it because I've got so many people that want new contracts and some of the sign on bonuses are making my eyes water. I give one to Danny Olmo and I had to give him like a 5 million sign on bonus. And also I'm saving some because I will show you if I go into the squad and go here and I go on to the likes, oh, the likes of Mukulele, for example, and go off a new contract. He doesn't want it because he's been he's someone bigger than us is interested in him, basically. And also, with the likes of Conrad Lima, he's unhappy at the club. So the reason why I'm keeping some money aside is because we're only going to get 55% if they do decide, if the board decides to sell them, or we have to sell them. So I might need a bit more to replace them. So that's why I'm keeping a little bit aside. So this window, I'm going to play it smart. We brought in one ridiculously expensive player. And obviously the player that we signed last season is now finally coming through. We've offloaded a player as well. Um, we've had no offers come through for Forsberg. I'm um, a player who I was keen to get rid of because obviously he is 30. He's not he's got decent attributes, but he's only getting older. And if we could get anywhere near that, I'll take 25. If we get anywhere near that, then obviously I'd be happy to to replace him with someone younger. But if we quickly do this and go best eleven, it's looking dangerous now. We've obviously got a seam hem We've got Angelino Gavardio, Mukalady, Klosterman, Galashi, Haidara, Olmo, Vitinha, and Kunku. On the bench, we've got Mavogo, Simikan, Mareba, Paulson, Orban, Sabosloy, Soleil, Forsberg, Navoa, Lima, Adams, Bernard, Martinez, Blashwich, Hemrich, Halastenberg. I mean, the list goes on. The list goes on. We have got such a big and very, very good squad, being honest, a very good squad. But let's get into season two. And when I say try and replicate what we've done it's going to be difficult but let's get in and try and see how we do well 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 season two has been simulated now we have 127 million this could be the best rebuild this channel has ever seen because we've already got such a good team and we've got so much money to reinvest into the team and carry on developing and we've still got three seasons to play but let's see how we done Bam. brilliant so we won the league again quite convincingly again by in second place Dortmund in third position Leverkusen also securing Champions League football we win the Pocko against Dortmund we win the DFL Super Cup against Bayern and the UEFA Super Cup against PSG we feel quite short in the Champions League just just a Man City I think that's again two times that we played them in the final but again four trophies one season best for goal scorer and best for goals conceded not great for when it comes to the cards gonna be honest but it is what it is at the end of the day i mean not the end of the world i'm not really you know too fussed about cards 
Wow, a seam him. He cost us a buck. He really did. But he scored 61 goals, this man. 61 goals. What a performance. Obviously, his attributes are honestly incredible. He's hit the five-star ability. He's rapid. He can finish. You know, he's also a decent height. He's got it all. He's got it all. Worth every single penny we paid for him. What a player. Got the highest match rating as well. Danny Olmo with the most assists. Best pass completion from Willy Orban. And we've, we've got to go. We've got to have a quick look at this schedule first. So, it's going to be a lot of green, isn't it? It's a lot of green, a lot of green. A 4-0 loss there to Man City, but it is Man City. They've actually signed um, Nabry to partner alongside Haaland. Very good team. But it's a whole load of green. I'm just seeing where it gets to the interesting part of the season. So we beat Sevilla 9-0 on aggregate there. We then take on Chelsea, and we do not struggle there at all. We get 5-1 across both legs. Bayern, again, we thump them in the semi-finals. We slip up to... Um, Manchester City in extra time in the Champions League and we actually win 4-2 in extra time against Borussia Dortmund in the Pockle final. Jude Bellingham getting sent off there. Very rarely a player, you know, he's such a young player but such a mature mind. So very unlike him, that is for sure. But overall, what a season that is. We'll have a quick look at the stats. So, goals. Obviously, you've seen him there. 61, outrageous. Citranio are back up with 17. Mareba coming in with 17. Andre Silva 16, Danny Olmo 14, Christopher and Kunku 11, Sabosloy with 10 assists. What are we saying then? Danny Olmo with 23, a beautiful amount of assists. 17 for Sabosloy, 14 for Asimhem, 11 for Vitinha, Mareba with 10. Mukulele with 10 and Conrad Lyman with 10 as well. Everyone chipping in, which is exactly what I want to see within this team. Now, highest match rating we're talking. We're actually getting Victor Asimhem there with a 7.97. 7.97. Um, absolutely outrageous. What a player he is. Obviously, you know, he is getting paid a lot, but he deserves it putting up stats like that. Worst performer is going to be... We'll go for someone that's actually played a reasonable amount of the games. He's going to be Tyler Adams, a player who obviously probably struggles to get in the team, so not going to give him too much slack. One thing I will say, I actually managed, if we have a look, um, where is it? I think they did go through, okay. Where are they? Comrade Lima, there. And where is he? Mukulele. The two players that didn't want to stay, I have convinced to sign contracts. So, I've now got a decision of who do I want to sell if I want to sell anyone to bring in a more world-class player because we have got £127 million to spend. Now, I've got to be careful because we're winning pretty much everything at the moment. This save has been an absolute joy to play with and I don't want to ruin it, so I'm only going to bring in a player who is a clear improvement. Possibly some backup as well, but overall, I'm only going to bring in people that are definitely an improvement on what we've got. But let's get in to the third transfer window. So then, guys, season three of the transfers has been done, and we're not messing about. We have spent £316 million. Granted, a lot of this is in installments, but we've also sold some players... We sold Galashi for 22 million. We sold Lookman for 21 million just because Galashi was getting old and his ability was going down. And Lookman prefers playing on the wing. And obviously, we don't play wingers. So I decided to offload them. And total, we probably, well, we sold 46.5 million worth of players, giving us a bit more transfer budget to work with. But the players we brought in are simply sublime. We've brought in Nuno Mendes from PSG our left back um just because we've got a, a couple of Asian fullbacks in Klosterman and also in Halastenberg and you know I had to replace them and this guy is going to be insane for us at left back obviously very young 21 years old his attributes are out of this world his rapid tackling is incredible fantastic fullback only 21 and for me it's worth it every single penny yes it's going to take him a while to get used to the team you know and all of this but at the end of the day i think we've got a left back there for 10 plus years what an absolute sign and he is if that wasn't good enough 
We then upgrade our Roman Playmaker, which we already had a good one. We had Hydara in there. We've now got Jude Bellingham from Dortmund. And one thing I will say is you're seeing that we've got the ability now to lure players from Dortmund and Bayern. But we are the main team in Germany now. I have made that possible. And for 150 million, won't say that again, that's a lot of money. But we bring in Jude Bellingham, one of my favourite players in real life. Only a matter of time until he joins Liverpool in real life, in my personal opinion. But on this save, he's come to the almighty Leipzig, and what a player he is. 20 years of age, and he can do it all in midfield. He can play any role, he can do it all. He's got absolutely everything in his locker. His attributes are so well balanced. His quick, good agility, everything about him. Fitness is good, work rate is top-notch, bravery, everything. Composure, everything about him is incredible. So that is why I brought him in. And then we went and replaced Galashi. A lot of the younger goalkeepers, I couldn't somewhat convince. There was a goalkeeper from Porto who I wanted, who I accepted the bid for, or they accepted the bid for, but he wasn't interested. So I went with Onana from Real Madrid, a very good goalkeeper. He is 27, but at the end of the day, next season possibly, if we get that funding, we can go all out for a really youthful goalkeeper. And Onana can drop back into a sort of rotation position, because there are a couple of players leaving on the free who don't want contracts. But again, for this season, he's the best goalkeeper we have, and he'll do a fantastic job. Very good aerial reach there, good at rushing out, bit of a sweeper keeper in my eyes, good natural fitness as well and an experienced goalkeeper that's played at the highest level of football, obviously. He's been playing at Real Madrid for the past couple of seasons, so very good signing there. And the last signing, just to sort of, you know, we've got a couple of old centre-backs as well, and the likes of Willy Orban, um, who will be leaving somewhat soon. So I brought in Tangai Nanazon Nianzu, 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 I think that's how you say that, from FC Bayern. Um, worth double what we paid for him. Absolutely amazing at centre-half. Obviously, you know, He's tall, very good strength, quite quick as well. Tackling, not exactly the high, high. I mean, it's 13, it's pretty decent. Great heading, great determination. And this team now is honestly something special. It really is. If we quickly look in the tactics, I'm just going to see what they recommend as our best 11. So they recommend that, so it would be a seam hen. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't play in Kunku up there, but we'll just keep it like this so you can see. Obviously, looking like Onana, Nukulele, um, Nianzu, Govardio, Mendes, Vitinha, Mareba, Bellingham, Omo, and Kunku, a seam hem. And if we look at the bench, it's given us like Martinez, Angelino, Haidara, Silva, Simakan, Sabosloy, Citrano, Soleil, Lima, Paulson, Klosterman, Adams. Then we've got the likes of on the reserves, we've got Willy Orban, Henricks, Forsberg, and loads of other players. The players that I am going to try and offload, if I can this season, I will if not next season. I will try this season, though, just to get a little bit more money back into the club. Would be probably Tyler Adams, Willie Orban, and Benjamin Hendricks. Um, yeah, that is what I'll, that's who I'll try and offload. But what a team we have built in three seasons. We have now got, you know, we've still got three seasons um, to play. So, I mean... What is the limit for this team? Because at the moment, we are firing on all cylinders. But let's get in to the third season. This is going to be interesting. Season three has been simulated. Now, we did bring in a few players, so it could be a gelling season, but I still expect to have won the league because we've spent loads of money and we've also got the opportunity to do that again now with 124 million being put into us for the fourth transfer window. But let's go and have a little look. Okay, so we managed to win the league. We're still the best at scoring goals. We're the best at conceding. Only 26 goals conceded. Um, not great discipline, but again, not too fussed. I seen him actually getting top goal scorer, which is very refreshing to see. Um, highest match rating again. Nuno Mendes, our um, left back, getting most assists. And the Anzu getting the best pass completion. Now, we lost in the semi-final to Liverpool. Quite a tricky semi-final. Obviously, next season, I would like to try and win the Champions League again. I don't know. I, you know, I think that's a reasonable request for the, for the squad that we've got. We won the Bundesliga. We've won the Pockel. And we lost the Super Cup at the start of the season, which isn't the biggest trophy, but would have been nice to win. Overall, I would say a very... Mm, now, I'm going to say it's a decent season. Obviously, we didn't win as many trophies, but we brought in so many new faces. They've got to adapt. They've got to start playing, you know, getting used to each other and stuff like this. So let's go into the schedule. And have a little look. So, 
sort of 16 mil wow and 14 so we lost to Bayern 2-1 um not even scoring actually it was an own goal that got him the goal of Picano there we had a 5-3 defeat there to Bayern uh Bayern are sort of coming back now into the um into the fight like they're making some good signings now um 2 0 loss there to Dortmund actually a Demi and Torgan Hazard a 2 0 loss to Bayern again they did have our number this season by the looks of it and we actually fall out of you know we drew 1-1 there and then we lose away 2-1 which you know it is a tough leg but we've been getting to the final minimum in these Champions League so it's a bit disappointing but overall we will take it when it comes to the pocket we actually had a 3-0 win in the semis against um, Bayer Leverkusen we had quite an easy run here actually Schalke Hoffenheim not bad and then her for Berlin in the final where Citrano got two and Vitinha got one in the 47th minute so overall a very very good season in terms of results there's a lot of high scoring games I'd say Bayern got the best of us in terms of direct results, but at the end of the day, we won the league. They didn't. We'll go into the squad, have a quick look then. So goals, 48 from Hasimhen, 29 from, from um, Strano, sorry, 23 from Areba, 19 from Olmo, 15 from Silva, 14 from Sabosloy, Nkunku coming up with nine, Nianzu with seven. We'll go to the assists. We've got 19 from Mendes, 16 from Vatinha, 15 from Bellingham. 14 from Citrino, 14 from Simakan, who's actually a centre-back, 14 from Olmo, 12 from Moreba, and overall a very good season. It was actually... How many appearances did he have? Seven. I'm actually going to give that to a seaman because he played majority of the games. He is the best player from match rating. Also, Citrino there putting up some very good numbers indeed. Looking at some of the worst performers who played quite a few games 45 onana i mean you know he is adapting he has just come in am i going to try and get a world-class goalkeeper and have him as a second yes i am and i also might if i've got enough money try and bring in a world-class striker to partner a seam hen obviously we are seeing that silver is doing a good job but if we can bring in someone of a seam hen standard to partner him alongside why wouldn't i we're being blessed with these finances it makes sense to do it so i might go in and try and do that but we'll see who we you know what we can do i am going to try and offload the likes of possibly paulson he's fallen off a little bit klosterman adams orban hemricks forsberg and bring in some slightly younger talent so there is going to be money coming into the club we have got 100% of the transfer revenue available to us, which is very good as well. We also did get accepted for the facilities to be upgraded, so that should come anytime next season. But let's get in to the fourth season of transfers, and let's go and make some more signings. So then, season four of the transfers has been done. And let's just say it's interesting. Let's just say that we have spent 300 and 25 million great british pounds now a lot of this is done in installments as well as i always say but we've also sold quite a few players that were actually on reasonable amounts of money and were getting quite old we have sold the likes of klosterman actually went on the free we've sold forsberg tyler adams auburn hemricks and paulson and we have brought in Van der Voort, who actually wasn't my sign-in, but he's finally been agreed. Tur no, Trubin, sorry, not Turbin. Trubin from Shakhtar for 80 million. Now, he is a fantastic goalkeeper, 22 years of age, and obviously that means that Onana will now be a backup goalkeeper, and this guy will be our number one. Four-star ability, fantastic. Very, very tall as well. Good jumper reach, good aerial reach. Everything about him is, is great. Very good positioning as well and he's only 22 so tons and tons of room to grow in that position moving on this is what i love to see of we can buy munich again by taking one of their hottest talents in musiala 70 million pounds but he can sort of play anywhere on the pitch he can play not that he would but he can play on the wing but he can play anywhere in midfield and be reasonably comfortable with it he's 21 and just like that we have got Bellingham and Musiala, two of the hottest prospects in world football, but two of the best prospects 
in German football for certain. And obviously 21, as I mentioned, fantastic attributes, very well balanced, great determination. Reminds me a lot of Bellingham. Bellingham might have slightly better attributes as balanced because obviously Musiala does play so many positions. He's sort of a, he's not okay, but he's decent at everything. Whereas Bellingham obviously can't play on the wing, but dominates midfield. But Musiala can definitely grow and become just as good as Bellingham at specifically their midfield areas, as we do not play wingers. Hence why I've brought him into the team. And the pool that we have now in this league is amazing. Obviously, we've won the title every single season we've played. So if you want to win the German title, you come to us now. You don't go to Bayern. You don't go to Dortmund. You come to RB Leipzig. Leipzig? Leipzig. This is where you come. So Musiala has signed. We then thought, do you know what? Nah. We need more firepower up top. We need more firepower. And we got firepower in this man here. How can you hate him? Obviously valued at 199 to 219 million pounds, giving us a strike force of Asimhen and Valovic as the, you know, the, the start and two, then Citrano and Silva as backup. Mind blown. Absolutely sensational options. The stats on this guy are nuts. 17 um sorry 16 pace 17 balance decent acceleration 18 finishing at the age of 24 by the way so if we look at this 24 years old for him and 25 for Asim Hen. we have got i would argue the best striker partnership in world football on this save absolutely sensational from him and the last sign and just because we have sort of let, you know, we let Klosterman go, we let Orban go, we let Henricks go. That's three defenders. But I wanted to bring in one young, just amazing defender. So I brought in Timber from Ajax for 75 million. Can play on the right, can play in the centre, can also play in midfield in some areas. So a very good flex, 23 years of age, four-star ability, Great, great, great attributes on him. I mean, the techniques there, good pace, good agility, good balance. You know, everything about him, great determination. And I just feel like he's a good player to have because he can cover so many positions. And this team is now looking like this on paper. And it's looking scary. I mean, you've got Trubin, Timber, Nianzu, Simakan, Mendes, Vitinha, Bellingham, more, more, uh, I always, always butcher that. Mariba, Musiala, Asimhen, and Valavich. And we have got so many talented players in terms of depth. We have got Onana, Angelino, Olmo, Citrano, Sole, Sabosloy, and Kunku, Guavardio, Haidara, Silva, Mukaleli, and Lima, who's actually the last man that just gets on the subs instead of the reserves. And yes, we've spent money. The board are being fantastic with us this season. They really are. And honestly, if we look into the finances, we're still secure. So we're not running the club into the ground because we're selling players and we're winning titles. But let's get into the fourth season and hopefully bring that Champions League back to where it belongs. Well, that is season four simulated. And I'm excited to see how we've done. I would be really, I wouldn't be disappointed, but a part of me really wants to see us win the Champions League again. But I know we've brought in so many good players now as well. Like, we've, we've got the team to be expecting it. We definitely should keep maintaining this, you know, winning the title. And it'd be really nice to see us win the Pockle and also possibly one of the pre-season. But let's get pre-season trophies, that is. But let's go and have a look how we've done. I've seen instantly we didn't win the Champions League, but we were able to maintain the Bundesliga title. So we're dominant in that as four in four now. We've won the Pockle. We won the Super Cup as well. We're the best at scoring. We don't concede hardly any. Best at that as well. Really bad for the cards, but not too, not too worried about that. We absolutely blitzed the league by a 30-point difference. Bayern Munich just can't keep up. Um, Marco Kerf is their manager now. They've actually got quite a good team, but obviously we do poach some of their players here and there. The same, same for Dortmund. We, we've done them in, obviously taking Bellingham from them as well. But a very good season in terms of the league. Again, I mean, I seem him not top goal scorer this season. Valovic comes in there and gets it. So don't know how I seem him feels about that. But what a first season from him. 49 goals. Not as good as I seem him's first season. I feel like I seem him got 60 marked, didn't he? If I, if I remember correctly. But let's go into the squad. We'll have a quick look. So goals. 
Wow, wow, wow. 49, obviously, from the man there. I see him dropping off slightly with 23. Um, Citrano there coming in with 20. Musiala contributes a 19 in his first season. Moreba there coming in with 13 as well. In terms of assists... We are talking 18 from the big man, 18 from Fatinha, who, unfortunately, we have lost on the free. Now, I tried to offer him a contract towards the end of last season on several different occasions, and he just wasn't interested because of the National League or some type of national tournament. And I couldn't... I, I couldn't get one in i could not offer him a contract so many times and unfortunately he is going to real madrid now on the free which is very disappointing um 13 assists for bellingham 13 for mendez and honestly if we go by the match ratings um valovic comes in gets man you know the average ma um, match rating gets the award for that H actually scoring an eight in his last five games and if we go down we go we'll go for the band that's you know played a decent amount will be this guy who's played quite a few is Musiala who actually had good stats so it's hard for me to slate him but if we look at the schedule now let's have a quick look then so we want to see the games which we lost because they're the ones we lost there to Hamburg actually in a shock result um Citrano they're actually getting man of the match I assume by getting a hat trick and we drew in the quarterfinals against Latu it would be 5-1 um we lost to Manchester United. We drew the first away leg and failed to score. It was a Seamhem and Sabosloy missing the penalties. And we had Frank Vert in the final in quite an easy pockle sort of, you know, game there, putting it bluntly. But overall, I, I don't know where we're going to really strengthen this team now. Obviously, we have lost one of the star men in midfield, but we've got so many options in midfield that can instantly replace Vitinha there. I mean, we've got Musiala that could possibly drop down and then play Nkunku. I mean, the likes of Nkunku and everything, we've still got, we have to utilise them as players um, because they are very, very good and we've got an incredible back line. But this last season, I do want to win the Champions League one last time. So I think it will be a great way to finish this save and go out with a big bang, you know. So let's go into season five and make the transfers and then hopefully seal this save out with another Champions League win. So then, Season 5 of the transfers has been completed. Obviously, we've got Vitinha there moving to Real Madrid on the free, which isn't the best. But I've decided to bring in a pre-made Champions League ready centre-backs. I've got so much talent at the back, but I'm bringing in someone who I believe is 27 years of age and is ready to, you know, he's got a little bit more um, calmness, a little bit more composed, and he can also teach a little bit about the defending side of the game. And that is Eda Militao, 107 million from Real Madrid, he is he's 27, but he is, you know, his experience, he's been playing for them for a while. And my centre-backs are fantastic, but they are still young. And I feel like this is going to be the man who is going to push us over the line for the last season to get us that Champions League and, you know, sort of just... Just guarantee it in, in my eyes. And I feel like it's important to have a pre-made world-class centre-half there. And he is going to be one of our best defenders instantly at the club. And his attributes are absolutely incredible. Obviously, he did cost a buck on quite a lot per week as well, as you can see here. But I feel like having one player, sort of like a Liverpool situation, where you've got a Van Dijk partner and a Canate, it really is good to have one player who is established, is a little bit older, and has been doing it for a longer amount of time. So that is why we signed him. Moving on to the last signing of this save is because I've signed this guy because Silva is going to be leaving on the free. He will not let me offer him a contract. So I wanted to bring in a person who is a good squad player and he is accepted to be a squad player and it's weakening an arrival 92 million in Anthony he is more comfortable on the wing but is more than capable of playing in that advanced forward role and again is very young 25 years of age can give anyone that's not playing well a good run for their money and obviously it's just also a great signing because it does weaken Bayern Munich obviously his first touch he also offers more of a um I'm gonna say he offers more of a a different side of the game going forward. He He's more of a Neymar in my eyes, you know. He's a bit more of a flair. He's got 16 flair if we're looking purely at attributes. But his pre 
a bit more of a tricky player, you know, a hard player to defend, whereas like Valavich, sorry, always butcher that name, and Asim Hem are pure centre forward, get goals, get goals. This guy can offer something different, and that is why I've got him in. Very good at dribbling. First touch, as I said, is very good, and also quite young, only being 25. But the main reason I went with this guy is because it continues to weaken Bayern Munich. We've taken Musiala, obviously we've taken one of their centre-halves, and now we've taken Anthony, and it is just really, really good that we keep weakening the opposition but that is going to be the last window for the club we have had some very very big windows a lot of money has been spent but the club has got the money to have let us spend obviously we have been winning as we've been doing this but let's get into the last season and hopefully we can win it all So then guys, that is the final season simulated at RB Leipzig. It has been an absolute honour to do this rebuild. They're one of my favourite teams to watch in real life. I'm a real big fan of them. I don't know why, it's just for years now I've followed them as a club and I really like them. But let's go in and see how we've done. Bam. Gutted. Okay, we didn't win the Champions League, but we did maintain the Bundesliga title. We won the Pockel and we won the Super Cup. A very tough game against Barcelona there in the semi-finals. Overall, I'm very happy with how it's gone. We are going to go to the milestones and see exactly what we won. I feel like we've brought this club to the most dominant team in Germany, that is for sure. And also making a good account of ourselves in Europe, obviously with a lot of money spent. But we were actually the best team at scoring, the second best at conceding as well, letting in 28 goals there. Vladovic there got 59 goals, back-to-back -back top goal scorers for him. Asim Hem getting the highest match rating. Mendes with actually 35 assists at left back, which is absolutely sublime. A dominant season when it comes to the when it comes to the league. I'm quite clear of Bayern Munich there. Um, Dortmund as well, nowhere near the second spot, which is unfortunate for him. For, for him. I'm going to say a seaman. Very unfortunate for them as well. Wolfsburg pushing up into fourth place. Now, one thing I want to do is we're going to quickly look at the schedule. So, we'll go down to the more business at 10-0 against quite a weaker team there. Lost to Bayern there. Um, lost to Hamburg there. Quite disappointing. But, oh wow, okay, so the first leg we lose 5-0 away to Barcelona, so you can't really expect anything from a from a, from a tie when you lose 5-0. It was an absolute thumping, and we did play a good team as well, so very disappointing there. And we do win the second leg, but it obviously is nowhere near enough. Um, the Pockel, we did actually thump Dortmund 5-0, a seam him getting a hat-trick. But overall, it's not a bad season. Some very standout results here in terms of thumpings in games. How did the players perform? So, goals, we are talking. 59 out of Vladovic, 39 out of a seam him, 20 out of Moreba, 19 out of Musiala, 15 out of Sabosloy. Assists, Mendes with 35, that is outrageous for a left-back. 17 for the main man, 17 for Sabosloy, 16 sorry for Musiala, 16 for Asimhem, Timber with 15, Moreba with 13, and Bellingham with 11. Obviously, we've seen this already, but Asimhem gets the best performer of the season. And who, who played quite a lot of games here? 52. It'll be Trubin, our goalkeeper, with the lowest match rating, but obviously he is a goalkeeper. You have to have standout games to really get that good match rating as a goalkeeper. But let's go in to one thing we'll do quickly, the club info. So we've got four-star training facilities. We've got four-and-a-half-star youth star facilities. So we've left them in a very, very, very good situation there. And if we click on this here, go into the career milestones. Here we go. So we took the job on in 2021, the first season, we won the Bundesliga, we won the Champions League, we won the Super Cup, we won the UEFA Super Cup as well. We then go back to back in 2023, we win the um, Bundesliga again, we entered the English Hall of Fame and we won the Pockel. Following season, we entered the German Hall of Fame, won the Bundesliga, won the Pockel, won the Super Cup. We then go on to 2025, we win the Bundesliga, win the Pockel, win the Super Cup, and the last season is the Bundesliga and the Pockel. So if I'm right in saying we won, we won, we won the Bundesliga five times on the bounce. What a accomplishment, putting Bayern Munich and Dortmund back a peg or two and making Leipzig the dominant team in Germany. And also winning the Champions League, which ironically was our first season. So 
Obviously, the Champions League is a hard one to win, but I imagine that first season, if I look back at the schedule, did we get blessed a little bit? I don't know if we can, if we look, can we actually go back to the first season we managed? And if we go, Man City in the final, but we had Villa, we actually had quite a tough quite a reasonably tough running when it comes to getting to the get into the final but i mean overall but just the only thing i'm disappointed in that we haven't won the champions league again especially with the squad that i've left them but i can't be too selfish at the end of the day because as i say all of these are simulated if i did play these myself like myself then arguably a lot of these games could have went different ways i could have won the final i could have won you know i possibly would have changed tactics going into a, a five nil down game against barcelona and things like that but we've left the club in he doesn't actually say the status but they've got 86 million a five million wage budget the team I've left them with is absolutely sensational. Um, one thing I will say is we do have Comrade Lima and Andre Silva going on the free. They didn't accept contracts, but we've left them with, if we just do the best team here, see what they say. We left them with Trubin, Simakan, Militao, Nia, Nianzu, Mendes, Timber, Bellingham, Mareba, Musiala, Valovic, and Asimhem. And on the bench, you've got the likes of Onana, Guavardio, Olmo, Citranio, um, Citrano, sorry, Angelino, Sabosloy, Anthony, Mukaleli, and Kunku. He's going. Sole, Haidara, Martinez, and loads of other people that are still on the reserves. Now, I've left this club in an absolutely fantastic situation. I think any Leipzig fan would be very, very happy with how this is how this has played out. I really do. But if you have enjoyed this rebuild, guys, please do leave it a like. Drop a comment below on who you want to see next. Please do hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. This way you will never miss an upload and you'll get notified as well when I go live or I premiere a video. But that is going to be it for today, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it enough, please do leave a like on the video and please do subscribe, turn on notifications for plenty more uploads. Underneath my camera, I've personally selected a video which I really think you'll like. And also up next on the other side is a video that YouTube think you might like from my channel. So please do check them out, guys. Also, if you do want to keep in touch with me, be sure to follow my socials. I've got my Instagram and my Twitter above. I love to interact with you guys. But last but not least, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.